The Boys Season 4. Finally watched it. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me on the streams whether or not I have watched The Boys yet, and I finally did. So, before we get into that, just to let you guys know, I am going to be watching uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, but I'm actually going to check it out on Friday. There's a lot of earlier showings. Makes it a little bit easier to get through traffic, as the theater I normally go to is a little bit further from me now that I'm living in. Uh, you know, since I bought the house, it's about an extra 10 minute drive and there's a lot of traffic there during the afternoon. So I'm going to go to the earlier showing on a Friday, but, uh, let's get into the boys. So I had heard a lot about the show before I watched it. A lot of people criticizing it. Uh, a lot of people saying it's a little bit too political or some people saying it's woke, whatever the case may be. And then I heard about the whole, uh, you know, cons not conspiracy, but rather, the the whole issue with the episodes involving Huey and possible sexual sexual abuse and hearing a lot of people talk about that so I was expecting that to be really bad I was expecting the show to be pretty not bad but not as good and after watching the show I gotta say overall I did enjoy the season I gotta be honest I, I don't I didn't think it was nearly as bad as people were making it out to be um, I do see where the issues are um, you know the first thing I'll say right out the gate is the show has definitely leaned into its political portions a lot heavier than it has in prior seasons. But what makes it more of an issue is that it's so on the nose to what's happening right now in the real world that it, it can I can understand why it gets annoying. And and it was a little annoying to a certain extent, um, but it's hard not to like the show, especially when you have, you know, some of these actors performing. Sorry, my dogs are fighting in the background in case you hear them barking. But uh, especially when you have the performances from these actors like Carl Urban, Anthony Starr, you know, this whole cast is just so enjoyable to watch. Uh, I think, you know, the story from the time the show began to where it is now, there has been a shift where they have used the political angle more to move the narrative than they I felt before. The political angle was always there and it was always funny and it's still funny to some extent because they do poke fun at both sides. There's no doubt about that. And I think that's that's fine. I think when you get a little bit too heavy handed with the politicalness and then on top of that, you really make certain moments on the nose. Like at this point, it's pretty clear that Homelander is supposed to be Trump and the other side, the starlights, or, you know, they're supposed to be like the other side. It, it's, it's pretty obvious. And, and that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate when you consider where the show has, I do agree that I think the show has seen diminishing returns. Um, each season I would say has gotten, I don't want to say worse, but it's kind of trending downhill. So it's probably a great idea that they're ending it with season five. Um, but even still, even with that, this show overall is still a net positive over most things that are on TV. This season, I thought was really good in terms of certain narratives. For example, I'll start with A-Train. I thought A-Train, he, he's been a bit of a slow burn in terms of his redemption arc, but I finally feel like they kind of hit a fever pitch here where he actually went out and did things and, and actually made a difference and actually came off as a hero in certain cases. Uh, when he saved M.M. And by the way, I will talk spoilers here. When he saved M.M. And the little boy looked up to him and smiled. You know, little things like that. Uh, some of the newer characters I really did enjoy. More so than anything, I really liked Sister Sage. I thought her character was great. Uh, Firecracker was okay. I, while she did play a big role in the narrative, in terms of playing some sort of... of uh, having some sort of relationship with uh, Homelander, uh, once we had that episode where she kind of breastfed him, I thought they were going in a direction similar to where he went with Stormfront. I believe that's what it, her name was. Anyway, you know which character I'm talking about, season two, the Nazi chick. Um, but then it kind of just tailed off. She's kind of like a pawn or a slave to him of some sort. Um, so she played a big role in the narrative in terms of her delivery and, and how she was very good at propaganda. Um, but beyond that, I, I didn't feel her character was nearly as strong as Sister Sage, simply because Sister Sage played a bigger role in the overarching theme of what Homelander wanted to accomplish in the season. And for that, I thought it was good. Um, in terms of the boys, their end of things, you know, uh, Mother's Milk kind of being in charge of the boys and uh, Billy the Butcher coming in and out, dealing with his death and, and the cancer he's dealing with. And I thought it was a good twist that 
Jeffrey D. Morgan's character turned out to be like his evil devil sitting on his shoulder versus his ex-wife or his, his wife who's passed away being the angel on his shoulder to a certain extent. Uh, so I thought that was a great twist. And I really, really liked uh, the ending when you kind of see that Billy finally made a decision to embrace that darker side simply because of what Ryan did. And Ryan, I, I feel bad for this kid. His like balls were dropping in the middle of the, filming the show because his voice was, <laughs> the way it was cracking and pitching, I was like, my God. This poor kid is gonna hate watching this because his like literally in the middle of his voice pitching and cracking as he's getting older. Probably next year he's gonna come back with a deep Barry White voice. But um, it was it, the little kid going, you know, Ryan going back and forth. You know, moment there be certain episodes and certain moments where you can see the kid has a heart. He wants to do good and he means well but then you see other instances where his father's influence has taken a big big role on some of the decisions he makes so seeing how the show ended with him killing um for all intents and purposes like his his god on or his godmother um again her character i forget her name as well she just doesn't show up enough for me to remember um and then seeing billy realize that you know hey i might have to kill this kid even though my wife you know her conscience or or it's speaking to me that i should try and save him he's way too dangerous it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in season five but seeing how that influenced butcher to just go you know salt of the earth and then kill newman at the end of the season was i, I like that i like that twist i like that little turnaround there and i like i said i do like the twist with uh, his conscience that whole time being jeffrey d morgan wasn't really there um in terms of like Huey and Starlight, you know, that relationship dynamic kind of got put on hold this season. Like, yes, you knew there were a couple. Yes, there were things, you know, but they they seem very distant. And I guess you can understand that considering the weight of everything that's going on. And then you see that uh, Starlight is going through her own issues. Uh, obviously, the way Firecracker is just kind of shitting all over her to the media. And then Starlight snapping obviously it's 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 hard to feel any sort of intimate relationship and when i say intimate i don't mean that just the sexual thing i mean just their relationship and how they conduct themselves overall um so but i thought starlight's arc was a little hit and miss you know the the whole spider-man 2 trope of losing my powers as i get stressed out i mean that we've seen that before i don't know why that's that keeps being used now in in certain superhero instances um i didn't like how she reacted to huey sleeping with a doppelganger i thought even though huey did figure it out by the time he figured out he figured it out just on time but it took him a few minutes to it took him a while to figure it out thinking back to her interactions certain things that she was saying her behavior it took him a while to figure that out and and then when you consider what's happened to Huey this season in terms of being sexually abused, you know, I, I want to kind of tackle this up this part of the episode because or this part of the show, because this was another big uh, to do during the season that I heard about, which was the fact that they oh sorry, my do they're playing right now. My dog just came into my room and left. So you're going to hear them loud and clear now. Um, but the whole angle with that, I thought it was a lot worse than what it turned out to be. Um, yes, um, he was certainly sexually abused in this more than once, actually. Uh, I thought it was just one big episode where this happened, but this happened twice. It happened with the doppelganger basically sleeping with him and pretending that it was Starlight when it wasn't, even though he was he didn't know at the time, even though obviously he's interacting with it, he's consenting it. It's still a form of abuse to manipulate somebody. And then the other cases when he was in Tech Knight's dungeon, and he was basically being, you know, BDSM with Ashley and Tech Knight. And that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was real dark, but I think the issue people had with that uh, is that when it comes to men, it's kind of looked at as, oh, it's no big deal. And even the director said he found it funny, where if it was a woman that went through that, and to be fair, this is true, it would have been looked upon in a different light. So that I can understand. With that said, I am happy that it wasn't as bad as I 
imagined it might be in terms of visually watching it. But I do concur that the message there is mixed and we need to kind of recognize that. Um, but Huey, again, uh, you know, always trying to be the light of the boys and unfortunately doesn't work out towards the end with Billy and Billy making his decision to go scorched earth. Uh, look, overall, I thought season four was really good. I thought it was good. It's not as strong as the prior seasons, but it's not nearly as bad as what uh, people are making it out to be uh, I do understand people's plight with the whole political theme but I can't sit here and, and agree when people say that it's woke uh, they have acknowledged and the woke thing since like season two they have made fun of both sides since season two and I just think the problem right now is there it's too on the nose now and it's become the focal point the the political angle has taken uh, a forefront you know, one of the things I know about the comics, even though I haven't read the comics per se, but I have, well, I have read some of them, but I haven't, one thing I know about the comics versus the show is that the comics had a lot of story elements that were not political. A lot of it, was, there were some cases where it was just the boys going out and working on a case that involved other soups that were not the seven. And I think if some of those elements had been incorporated into the show a little bit later, um, you know, like season three and this season, and maybe even somewhat season two, uh, it would have at least lightened the load on the political forefront. <laughs> That's Mason barking his butt off. Sorry, guys. That's just how he is. I can't control that. This is why I try to do my videos later, but uh, I'm filming this in the morning and they love to play in the morning. If it had been incorporated into the show, throughout different seasons it would have at least given us something else to go by but they've really leaned heavy into the political stuff and this is why i can understand why people are not crazy about it but look i'm looking forward to season five season five looks like it's going to be lit i'm very interested to see where they're going to go because how things are trending towards season five is very different from how it ended in the comic uh so there are some elements that are there that are still present from the comic but for the most part it's taken a completely different turn so interesting to see how this is going to play out um but yeah i thought overall it was pretty good i still think the show is in that positive overall in terms of entertainment compared to a lot of things but i will acknowledge that the uh it's diminishing returns from season one to season four so anyway that's it for my review of the boys i hope you guys enjoyed it tell me what you felt about season four and uh we're gonna talk more about the boys on friday night stream in detail with spoilers uh just to cover some other aspects plus i want to hear what you guys have to say as well as uh, Cobra Kai Season 5, which I'm going to do a review of that tomorrow, as well as an out-of-the-theater review of a quick review and my reaction to Deadpool Wolverine. We'll do the Deadpool Wolverine spoiler talk on Saturday stream, and then we'll go from there. That's it for this video. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy.